Okay, so today we're going to be solving the tiny URL system design interview question. Uh, and before we start, I just think it's important to note that this is one way of solving the interview question. There's many other ways, but I think this is a really robust way of solving the problem that addresses the main concerns that many interviewers would be looking to be solved. So with, with that said, let's jump straight into it. So for the functional requirements, it's really simple. When we're given a long URL, we have to create a short URL. And then when we're given a short URL, we have to redirect the user to the long URL. And for the non-functional requirements, we're going to require very low latency and very high availability. So it's a really simple concept, but there are some nice areas where you can go super deep on the scalability issues, which many interviewers will expect you to, to really know. So starting off, I always like to look at the API design. So for this, I think a simple REST API will do. So we'll have one endpoint, which will be the, the post endpoint, which will be the create URL. And here the parameters will take a long URL. And then once we've created the short URL, we can just simply return with a status code of 201, indicating that that's been created. And then we'll have a second endpoint, which will be the get endpoint, uh, where in the URL we provided with the short URL. And then what we'll do is we will then redirect the user. We'll do a 301 permanent redirect for the user to the uh, previously provided long URL. So super simple REST API here. Then for the schema, again, really simple. We'll have a long URL, which would be a string, a short URL, which would be a string, and then a create that, will, which would be a timestamp. But we could also add additional fields here, which I'll touch on later on. So the first key question we have to ask the interviewer is how long should the URL be? And to, to answer that, we kind of need to know what, what is the scale of the application. So let's say, for example, the interviewer said, OK, it's required that the application can create 1,000 URLs per second. So then we know that every year, so if we multiply 1,000 times 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours times 365 days, that we're going to be required to have roughly 3.5 billion or 31 billion URLs created each year. And then if we anticipate a kind of read to write request ratio of 10 to 1, that means we're going to be doing roughly 300 billion reads per year. So again, it kind of is something to keep in mind when thinking about the kind of uh, scalability of this application. So then the next question then is, well, what characters can we use? And so typically most interviewers, and it's fairly safe to assume that we'll, we'll be able to use A to Z lowercase, A to Z uppercase, and 0 to 9. And that means then we'll have a total of 62 characters to use. So then with that information, we can then look at how many unique short URLs can be created. So if we've got one character, if we put that to the power of 62, that means we'll have 62 unique combinations, which makes sense because there's only you know 62 characters to choose from. Uh, and then similarly, two to the power, so we've used uh, two characters, then we've got two to the power of 62, which is 3,800. And so if we skip on down to six to the power of 62, so for six characters, we've got 56 billion. And then for seven, we've got uh, seven characters, we've got 3.5 trillion. And so if you look here, if we've got, you know, if we're going to be expected to generate, you know, 31.5 billion URLs each year, if we look over the span of 10 years, well, that's maybe 300 billion. And so you can see here, well, 56 billion won't kind of, you know, it's kind of, it won't be enough, but, you know, seven characters at 3.5 trillion will be. So that's why we're going to go with seven characters. Okay, so now that we have all the information we need from the interviewer, we can kind of start putting together a really simple high level um, system design. So here we've got a user, makes a request to a load balancer, that will then distribute it to a web server, and the web server will then uh, get the information it needs from the database and then redirect uh, the user to the, to the long URL. So while this technically works, obviously, you know, it's not going to be able to handle the scale that we've previously talked about. So the first naive solution could be able uh, could be to introduce a count cache, which means that every time a web server is given a, a long URL, it goes to the count cache and it asks for a number. The count cache will then return a number, a base 10 number, and the web server will then convert that into a base 62, which will then be used as the short URL. And so while this technically works, we've introduced a single point of failure here with the count cache, which is something we never want to do. And so we've kind of got to come up with a, uh, a more nuanced solution. So here, what we've done is we've horizontally scaled both the web servers and the count cache so that we've got multiple instances of each so that we can handle if certain nodes go down. However, now we've introduced a new problem. So let's say, for instance, one of the web servers makes a request to the count cache and it gives back a value of 10. And then simultaneously, another web server makes a request to the count cache and it also uh, gives a value of 10. Well, then now we've got a collision and this is something that we cannot have in our system. We want it to be kind of 
uh, highly available. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move it on to the next level. Okay, so looking at this next iteration, what we're gonna introduce now is we're going to get rid of our count cache and we're gonna introduce a Zookeeper. And so Z Zookeeper is really good uh, to be used as a kind of centralized service for maintaining you know, configuration information and kind of providing distributed synchronization. And so we're going to use a range technique here. So what will happen is each web server will reach out to the zookeeper and the zookeeper will give it a range of values from which it can create URLs. And so for instance, the first web server might come over and it'll give it the range of zero to one million. And the next range will then be one million to two, uh, one million one to two million. So what this means is that each server will be creating uh, unique short URLs as they're all operating in different ranges. And so when a, a new web server comes on, it'll reach out to the zookeeper and it will then ask, okay, what ranges uh, can I have? And it'll give it a new range. And then similarly, when a web server completes its range, it will then reach out to zookeeper, which will then provide it a new unused range. And then you may be asking, well, okay, well, what if a web server reaches out to zookeeper? It's given a range, but then it instantly dies. Well, what that happens with that is that range will no longer be used and that those 1 million values will never be used. So we've kind of wasted a million values, but, Again, because we chose seven characters, um, we've got you know 3.5 trillion. So losing a million here and there actually isn't that much of a problem at all. But you could also say that the zookeeper is also a single point of failure. So what we could do is we could have multiple instances of it. Um, and you have to remember that the zookeeper does not get that many re uh, read requests because uh, you know unlike the count cache, which every single time a web server wanted a number, it went to it. The web service only go here to get its range of values and then unless it finishes the range it will not come back to that zookeeper service so this is a really robust solution that kind of scales really well the next step we can do then is to scale our databases so again here we can look at the classic you know sql no sql acid base trade-off so you know you could make an argument we could use uh you know an sql database like postgres and then use sharding to handle the scale but i think you know, maybe a slightly better approach might be to go with maybe column oriented database like Cassandra, which could you know really handle the scale that, that we're dealing with here. So typically I'd go with a no SQL kind of Cassandra approach here. And then to kind of reduce the load even more on the database, I'd also use maybe a distributed cache like Memcache or Redis. Uh, and here I'd store maybe the most popular short URLs so that the web servers would first check the, the cache. Uh, to kind of reduce the load on the databases as well. So if we walk through an example, so let's say we've got a post request, so we're gonna send a post request to the create URL endpoint, that'll come to the load balancer, which will then distribute it to the web servers. One of the web servers will then, if it doesn't have a range, it'll go to the zookeeper and get its range, and then it will generate the short URL uh, from that number using the base 62 encoding. The next step then will be to save the long URL and short URL in the database. Uh, and it could also store it in the distributed cache, depending on what the you know, caching logic is for the application. Uh, and then finally, the web server will just respond to the user with the, uh, the newly created short URL. And then for the get request, what will happen is a get request will come in with the short URL uh, in the actual URL itself. Uh, the web server will first check the cache uh, and see if it's in there. If it's not in there, well, then it will retrieve it from the, the long URL from the database, and then it will simply uh, redirect the user to the long URL. So really simple, but again, it's this kind of scalability uh, issue that you know uh, interviewers will really expect you to, to go deep on. And then finally, there's, there may be some additional talking points which you may or may not be required to know. So one of them may be analytics. So what we could do is we could also maybe maintain counts for each of the URLs to determine you know, which short URLs are most popular and then cache them. And this kind of, again, can help us with the short, the hotkey problem like, uh, like that Twitter has. And then similarly, we also can ha store maybe IP address information to get location info, which can help us determine where to locate our caches to just, again, reduce that latency and improve the overall performance. We can also introduce rate limiting, and so this can help prevent against DDoS attacks, whereby users try and flood our servers with requests to kind of uh, try and make them fail. And so rate limiting could be an interesting talking point there. Uh, and then finally, there's you know security considerations. So, you know, if you look at our uh, range theory, we are sequentially in incrementing, and so therefore potentially we want, might want to add a random suffix to the short URL to prevent hackers being able to predict URLs. But then it would be making a trade-off between the length of the URL. Uh, and you know the predictability. So that trade-off between length and security is maybe a good talking point uh, that you can have with the interviewer. So this is just one way of solving the problem. If you've got any other ways, definitely leave a comment below. I'll be very interested to see you know, how other people solve it. Uh, and look, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot, and I'll see you in the next one.